So with my customer Dim Sum at the Grace Kitchen of the Hilton Colombo Host Hotel, here's my guest again, Arun Das Bandaranaikam. Arun, so your your first foray into the performing arts would have been uh, stage theatre. Yes, I think so. Yeah, maybe I played a bit of piano before that when I was a little fella, <laughs> but then that's at school level. But yeah, stage. Any memorable characters you've played in your in your journey? Ah well, every character I guess is memorable to a degree. Um, I enjoyed, but then that's a school production. I did um, um, uh, my school did rather uh, a variation of My Fair Lady, but using George Bernard Shaw's play uh, Pygmalion, and we did a kind of an adapted version. And uh, I played the dustman the father of Eliza Doolittle and that role allowed me to flourish in a, in a sort of way, playing a character role and uh, I guess I enjoyed doing that, yes, so that stands out but I have done many other roles, Rala Hami uh, in Well Moodley How was a play that was a lot of fun and so and and it's a bit over the top. And what... Who directed you? Uh, Jit, Jit, Jit Pires, yes, in that production. And w what was interesting with regard to that production, or should I say that role, was that so many people in the audiences who knew nothing about a Ralahami character, I'm talking of a contemporary audience, and the character does not exist in reality, not now. It was pre-1935, if at all, that that scenario might have existed. But how they responded and reacted and enjoyed that character surprised me. And of course, since they enjoyed it, I enjoyed performing for them. So I, I think that was also a memorable role, yeah. Arun also enjoys uh, blowing his own trumpet. <laughs> That's only it. Take it whichever way you want yeah, to. <laughs> that's that's uh, an, an expression, but <laughs> hopefully not in reality. <laughs> the metaphor, yeah. Why the trumpet? A stupid question, I know that, but still. Uh, yeah, why could it be anything? Yeah. Uh, the trumpet, I, well, since you asked, I reckon the character and uh, musician, they're they're combined. He's not only a musician, but he's a character as well, and that is Louis Armstrong. He played trumpet. And I was drawn very much to the character in as much as it was, I was drawn to his playing of that particular instrument. So, Which was stronger, the character or the music? They both work together. There are many other trumpet players, and I admire their craft, many other trumpet players. And I admire their craft very much. But the character of Armstrong, coupled with his prowess on the instrument, was an instant draw. And uh, make me, made me want to hear more of what he does and how he does it. So I guess the character is important. So locally, have you fashioned yourself in the lines of Louis Armstrong? No, not really. I don't think I can aspire to uh, be that. He, he was one of a kind. Uh, locally, I didn't play professionally, only semi-professionally. I have performed with friends and appeared on stage uh, playing the horn. He was also on Bonsoir with his trumpet with Yasmin Rajapaksa many, many, many years ago. Yeah, indeed. Many years ago. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, I, I didn't, I, I cannot say that I, I filled such a, an enormous role as he did, no. Arun, you've also been in a lot of a fair number of foreign movies shot in, shot in this country, yes. Yeah, 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 now that you mention it, yes. There was uh, a French film called The Price of a Woman. Yes. That's right, yes. Uh, and you, I think, a sergeant or a police inspector in that film. No. The Burning of the Bride, Lack of Dowry. I think, I, yeah, I, I think I played a, a kind of a lascivious kind of doctor type of person, yeah, in a hospital, yeah. I can't quite remember the role. It's, quite a long while ago, but I, I know it was a French production, yeah, that, that I do remember. <laughs> because the lady who is currently in, uh, 
Emilie Paris, right? Is that the one? Yes, Emilie Paris. Uh, the older lady who is the the head of that ad, ad agency, she was in this film. Oh. And I think uh, Philippine Le Roi Bolie. And she was in Sri Lanka uh, shooting for Le Prix, du, uh, Le Prix d'une Femme, a film I think by François Villiers. Arun, talking of English, yeah. um, how important is correct pronunciation? As a broadcaster of radio or TV? Okay. I'd like to use the word communicator. Okay, okay. communicator. Now, anyone who has any profession has to have tools of the trade. In, in my case, it is language. That's a tool. I have to use it correctly. Why? So that with the least bother, those to whom I communicate can comprehend, follow, and do whatever they do with the information or the instruction or whatever. So in order to be able to communicate lucidly, the tools have to be used effectively. So in response to that inquiry, I would say as a user of the language, I'm concerned about pronunciation, about diction and syntax, the appropriate word at the appropriate place in the right order. In that way, it makes it a lot easier for whoever is listening or who is in the audience to know, oh, this is what was said or this is what we need to take in. It's as simple as that. You did mention that listening patterns have changed over the years mm. uh, dramatically. Mm. So, for example, now today on radio, I hear and I'm not running anyone down. So don't get me wrong. Uh, have a listen to this song. So mm. can one have a listen to a song? Yeah, well, I would prefer a more correct, even staid usage by saying, do listen to this song, rather than saying, have a listen. Because listen is not a product or an item uh, that one can have. <laughs> you can have an opportunity. That's considered to be appropriate usage, but not have a listen. I, I'd rather avoid that. But do listen, yeah. Listen to this. It's also possible. <laughs> then I send you an invite or to something mm. and not an invitation. That's also modern parlance today. Yeah, well, I, I would be uncomfortable with it because it doesn't ring correct. I prefer to, it to be correct, yes. So English language has been morphing itself all along the years. It's been going on. I have, oh, yeah. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it remains a foreign language. But it is a yeah, we are not native to. speakers. Yeah, we are not native speakers. But the language has been very useful in as much as many other things that we use, like a motor car, was not is not a Lankan thing. But we use it because it is effective. Buses, airplanes and everything. So there are many things that we use that we have acquired. And they're useful. They are they have a validity and a good rationale that we can use them. We don't need to use a bullock cart because uh, of any, any feeling that why use something from elsewhere. No, we don't think like that. Language, I consider to be similar. And it's a very good vehicle. What I mean is the language is a good vehicle for communication. It is, whether we like it or not, the language of business in this country. There is no question about it. And, and uh, there have been on many occasions, because of the role that I play, often as a master of ceremonies or something like that, I come across and I do engage with people who themselves are not native speakers. People from Korea, from Japan, occasionally from China. And they come up and have short conversations with me and say, where did you learn to speak like that? And I say, well, I'm from here. and." I, and they say, we would like to be able to talk like that. Do you conduct classes? No. Do you? No, I don't, don't conduct classes. You should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very good teacher that way. Now, why are the Koreans and the Japanese saying they would like to be able to speak? Why? They can manage their own language, then they have. The reason that they're asking is because they reckon that they can expand their horizons especially if they're in the realm of business, they can expand their horizons and dispense with the use of interpreters. If they, can, okay. if they can handle it themselves, what they feel, what they want to say, they can. If they had the grasp of correct usage of the language rather than, 
what we refer to as broken English. Now, I am okay with broken English if if all I need to do is order some dish or something like that, and you know we can manage with some gestures and all that. Well, I'm okay. But when it comes to a something a, a little deeper than that, a little more complex, then I think I need to be able to express myself with the minimum effort, having the right tool. So that's why I think pronunciation matters, diction matters, uh, phraseology or vocabulary, all of that comes in. The appropriate word, yeah. So I think it's a good thing to have if you can. So we are not native speakers of English, no. uh, but the English of Shakespeare is would be obsolete today. Uh, you would read it in translation, and the English we speak today has also been changing all the time. So I, isn't I it on a complete that. journey of change? Oh yes. So English that once spoke in the 1960s and 70s would not be the English of today. As I said, have an invite, have a listen. Yeah. So do there is a certain casualness, and I think very casual. The, the phone culture, should I say, the smartphone culture or the Twitter culture has also contributed by making language skeletal. It's just skeletal, that's yeah. what. So, so uh, you text with short forms, yeah, shortened short forms. Form, yeah. So your have a listen could be as a result of that kind of things where uh, the, 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 the elegance of language has been replaced by that which is merely effective or the efficacy has come in. I, I, all I need to do is just communicate the idea. I don't need to worry about couching it in the appropriate expression, no. So, Arun, who is Arun Das Bandaranai? <laughs> I ask myself the same question every time I wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, what the hell are you doing and who are you? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, I think you have indicated that I am all sorts. And uh, I am a result of many influences from all over, family, friends, uh, people I have chosen to associate with or learn from, all of those are influences. And I would say, uh, although it seems a little trashy to say it, but even uh, entertainment figures, people with character, not just not just lousy performers, but people with character, they have also influenced. You, you want to know how do they tick, why, what, what is their appeal, uh, what is it that makes them decent, honest, trustworthy. What, what is it? You learn from them. So you pick up those things and you begin to, you you know, imbibe, I would say, uh, all of those different qualities. So you're all that in one, rolled in one. Well, if that's what you say. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, that brings chat to uh, chat two to a close. Thank you, Arun. Thank you so much for being Thank my you. guest I'm, on the show. I'm delighted to be here. Um, and being enjoying our after. food at the Grace <laughs> Kitchen of the Hilton Colombo. Yeah. So, why don't you have an eat now? Have an eat. Yeah. Have an eat and have a drink. And, and we I can prefer, put I prefer the fish. Though. We can put a chat <laughs> after we say goodbye. We'll see you again next week with another guest on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.